for us to cover them, to nurture them, to take care of them, to give them back to him. They're not ours to keep. Kimo ain't mine to keep. Kalisha ain't mine to keep, but neither is Crystal. I had to learn that I got to turn them loose. I got to let them go. But I remember this, that I trained them in the way that they should go. Kendall Lim's palette was back there in that corner with shut-ins. They came to shut-ins. I didn't come to a shut-in to leave them at home. I didn't come to a prayer meeting to leave them at home. I very seldom came to church and left them at home. Did they all the time want to come? No. But because I'm mama, it's my house. Kendall paid the bills. Big Ken paid the bills. But I'm part of him. So I pay bills. You got to do what I say do. And part of that was, and I brought them to church. I didn't drop them off. Stop dropping our children off at church. Even when it's youth night. You ain't got to stay the whole time, but you need to come in and check out what's going on. We need to be a part of our children's lives. So as mothers, God has given us, as women, God has equipped us to take care of this. Now I'm almost finished, so let me just get these last three points and I'll be out of your way. As wives and mothers, potential wives and mothers, there's an order for our lives. We are to be wives and mothers. Some of us, like me, was a mother before I was a wife. If that's the order that you're in, ask God to forgive you and move on. Don't stay there. You get it back in order when you repent and ask God to forgive you and you move on. You don't let the enemy keep bringing that. That's good. I was married for 10 years. All of my kids were born. I was 23. You got that out of order. You had Kendall when you were 17. This was going, and I had to eventually tell the enemy, you know what? That was then. Right. Yeah. I repented. Jesus took that to the cross. Not for me to carry any longer. So you gotta, you gotta know how to get the enemy off your back. But if I hadn't learned how to pray at 50 something, I would probably still be carrying that guilt. I had to break generational curses that was in my house, in my family line. My mother, my grandmother had my mother at 16. My mother had me at 17. I had Kendall at 17. Then Kendall had one at 18. I was like, the devil is a lie. We finna break this thing. So now Kaden and Kendall's kids, Kendall's kids, because Kendall got the oldest. Kendall's child gonna be 18, and every time I think about her, I said, Lord, keep her. Because I don't want her having a kid at 18. You break. My, my grandmother and grandfather split up after 42 years of marriage. They split up 42 years. She looked at that man for 42 years. And then all of a sudden, she said, I don't want him no more. He said, I don't want her no more. And I had to ask him, where y'all going? Because who wants y'all at that age? My granddaddy told me I got me. My granddaddy told me I got me a Philly. I said, a Philly? When I met her, she was my age. I asked her, what she doing with my granddaddy? Because she ain't getting no money. I'm getting all that. You ain't getting none of that. My mother and father got divorced after
after 20 years, 15 years of marriage. When it got to me and Kendall, it stops here. That's right. And me and Kendall, and I'll tell y'all, Kendall in the room, Kendall, every five years, I'll be like, we gonna make it another five. <laughs> when we got to five, I said, well, we made it five. Baby, when we got to seven, I shot it. When we got to 10, I was like, uh-oh. Baby, when we hit 20, I was like, it's on like Flint. And this year, we're gonna be 37. Tell me God won't turn things around. You have the ability to break curses that follows your generations. That's the power that God has put in us. So authority of God that dwells on the inside. And that's not just for women, that's for men too. You know, whores, but you know, they cheated on their wives. They had a, you can break that generational curse, and that don't have to be named among you. You can treat your wife the way the Bible told you to treat her. He told you to love her as Christ loved the church. And I'm telling you, Christ loved the church so much, he died for it. You gotta love your wife enough to die for her. You ready to die for her? Back in the day, he was like, no. He said, I ain't gonna let them shoot you, but I ain't. He'll take a bullet for me now. You know why? Because I'm his good man. And he's obtained favor from the Lord because he married a good wife. Amen. Now, that was a little bragging on myself, but that's because I'm a Proverbs 31 woman. <laughs> When we talk about that woman, that Proverbs 31 woman, it gets scary. It really does. Because you think about all the stuff that you have to do. Sometimes you get up in the morning and say, Lord, what does my day entail today? But if you acknowledge him, it says in Psalm 63 and 1 says, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. But I do that because I want to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. So there are mornings when you get up, you got to ask the Lord, what does my day entail? <laughs> Direct my day. What what what's on the your agenda for my day and my family's day? Because that's what the Proverbs 31 woman did. Not only did she get up early and cook, she asked the Lord to direct their day. As women, we must learn to delight ourselves in the Lord and commit our ways unto Him. Psalms 37 and 4 and 5 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thy heart, heart thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Now, you know I like to read the Message Bible. Right. So this is how it reads in the Message Bible. Open up before God and keep nothing back from him. Mm. If you got a rotten day the day before, Lord, that day was horrible. I don't want to repeat that day. I need a new day. That's good. It says he'll do whatever needs to be done. He'll validate your life in the clear light of day and stamp you with approval at high noon. That means he is going to order your steps and everything you do, it will prosper. Again, women, I say to you, allow God to direct you. He will bring the qualities of the woman that he destined you to be. Not who you want to be, who he destined you to be. Because he's destined every woman in this room to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Jeremiah 29 11 says this, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And again, we go to the Message Bible, and it reads, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. Plans to give you a future give you the future you hoped for. And as women of God, our hope is not against the will of God because 
we are living in his will. So there's nothing that we hope for that's outside of God's will because we're part of him. And he's not going to give us anything that's not of him. Amen. Amen. As I finish, this is what I want to say to you women and no, to you women. As you grow in, hat, in God, you wear your hats. You're designed to wear every hat that you wear. God equips you to wear every hat. I'm learning. I'm not a floppy hat person. I don't think I'm a hat. I wear a cap. But if I have to put on a floppy hat, as you saw, I wear it well. That's right. You wear your hats well. God has given you the ability, the strength, the grace, the endurance, the power to wear your hats. Wear them with the strength and the virtue that God gives you so that your works will praise you and you won't have to praise yourself. I love you. God loves you. Be encouraged. Be the woman that God has called you to be. And most of all, wear your hats well. Come on and give God.